Welcome back to The Heat. For weeks now, Palestinians have been protesting along the border in Gaza. Israeli forces have used live ammunition, rubber bullets and tear gas against the demonstrators in what Israel says is its right to defend itself. Joining us now from Detroit is Huweda Araf. She is a Palestinian-American attorney and the co-founder of International Solidarity Movement, a Palestinian-led non-violent resistance movement. And still with us from London is Ian Black and in Tel Aviv, uh, Boaz Bismuth. Thanks all so much for rejoining us. Huweda, let's start with you. You're, you're new to the discussion. Um, What's leading to this massive, massive demonstrations? Because this is the biggest upsurge we've seen for a long time. Nathan, what we have in Gaza is a situation where two million Palestinians are trapped in a small area of land where Israel controls all the borders, everything that goes in and out. 70% of the population of Gaza, over half mm. are children, are originally refugees from homes that are just miles away, and they have been for 70 years denied the right to return to their homes. They were kicked out for the creation of Israel when Israel demolished or depopulated their villages and for 70 years have been waiting to go home and on top of that for 11 years you've had a criminal medieval siege that Israel has <clears throat> imposed which has denied Palestinians the basic right to live any kind of dignified life cutting off or severely limiting the things that they can import which stretches anywhere from food to medicine exports are almost completely denied Palestinians can't travel even for urgent medical care. So you have, uh, last year alone, you had 54 Palestinian patients, most of them cancer patients, die waiting for Israel, giving them permission to leave. This is no kind of life. And so Palestinians have been saying, we deserve the right to live a dignified life. We want to go home. And therefore, on this coming up on the 70th anniversary of their dispossession, tens of thousands have, have taken to marching to turn the world's attention to their plate because they've been largely ignored. And what we've seen is Israel deploy snipers on hilltops to open live fire on unarmed demonstrators. It's criminal, it's a war crime, and we've seen some kind of outcry, but still nobody holding Israel accountable, and they continue to shoot at unarmed demonstrators just calling for their freedom. Uh, but as you're smiling there, this is not a smiling matter. There's, there's people dead here, and Israelis have shot into yeah. Gaza. I mean, uh, okay, Israel's right to defend itself, but there's, there's been widespread no. condemnation of this. No, please, first of all, when I smile, I don't smile because people are dying. I permit you to say, when you speak about health care and taking care of, of people, um, let me permit me only to tell you a little story that concerns a very personal one. I have to react. You know, we have a hospital for kids in Israel, called Schneider, it's in Petah Tikva. Mm. When my son was born, he was born with a very big heart defect. And when he was treated, at the age of three days, operation, surgery of eight hours, the kid beside him was a little baby that had exactly the same treatment, like my son, from Gaza. So please, know the, all this propaganda and not here. You Second cannot thing, deny the when you fact speak about, that 54 I mean, all this died waiting for Wait, 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 wait I, I did not disturb you. Uh, madam, I, madam, 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 madam. Madam, I did not disturb okay. you. Please permit finish me. Your, please I mean, finish you your point, Boaz. You please this finish your point. very nice your... speech of yours. And you speak of, you speak, my point, let me, she was, when you speak of non-violence, the organization you represent, you speak of all the crimes of Israel. Permit me, maybe, uh, maybe you should remind me what, I mean, is Hamas, uh, how would I say this, no, maybe they deserve the Nobel Prize. Maybe it's the nicest uh, organization ever. Boaz? Maybe they're peace-making uh, people. Boaz? So, when you speak about 70 years ago, Israel being created, let me permit you that Gaza existed, not as a state. Gaza, we were there. And by the way, if you need also some fact-checking, let me tell you another thing. When you say Boaz? Israel controls all the borders, I thought there was also a border to Egypt. Okay. And how come Egypt, Which? an Arabic country, Boaz? does not permit them to cross the border? So, sorry to Please interrupt. Answer me. So, sorry to interrupt. No, sorry, you. let's just keep this um, civil. First of all, we're talking about the last few weeks, not the last 70 years. I know, obviously... I keep it civil, no, but at least, I, know, I mean, let's, I know, be, but can let's we just, be honest. Can you, ju can you just honest. address the question that I had um, that was, OK, Israel says it has a right to defend itself, but using uh, uh, live ammunition against unarmed civilians protesting on the Gaza side of the fence uh, uh, it seems a little indefensible in, in, the, in the court of international opinion. Unarmed. First of all, you say they're unarmed. You know, Saturday, I'm making a newspaper. At 12 o'clock, I had to change the front page because three times in two hours, three uh, 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 di different terrorist groups tried to cross the border. We're not talking here about kids. We're not talking about here uh, uh, nice people. Now, when you say about kids being hurt, and I'm the first one to be sad concerning that, 
would you, for example, leave now, uh, uh, leave now a conflict between a country and a terrorist organization? Imagine now there's a football game, a football game, and it's going to be a violent game. Will you send your children over there? We're there. We see them. You send your kids, you send your women to the front line, to the borderline. Why? Because on the contrary, what you want, you want to make this region be even more violent instead of taking care of your people. This is what Palestinian uh, leaders should do right now, and that's exactly what they don't do. On one hand, you have Mahmoud Abbas stopping, cutting all the funds, all the aids to Gaza, one hand, and in Gaza you've got Hamas, a terrorist organization. I don't say it, the world says that, sending them I in mean, kids to the border in front of Israel okay. and terrorists behind. And the okay. big difference between we and our neighbors, no, let me finish my phrase because this is important. In my country, Israel, missiles protect people. In Gaza, people and even kids protect missiles. This is the big difference between us and them. And that is why I smiled. Uh, Hawaida, would you respond? I'm going to go to Ian in a minute to comment down, right. but, but obviously respond. Thank you, Nathan. There is so much to respond to, but what we see here in general is Mr. Boaz basically dehumanizing the entire Palestinian people, saying the Palestinians don't care about their children, and trying to blame the Palestinians for Israel's policy leadership, of using live okay, ammunition okay. against Palestinian, Palestinian Let her answer, civilians. Please. This is what you're doing. You're blaming Palestinians for Israel's policies of using live ammunition against unarmed demonstrators. And yes, there are they are unarmed, Boaz. There has not been one credible report anywhere about Palestinians being armed in this demonstration. And in fact, what we do see opposite, instead is Israel coming out with ridiculous claims of that certain people that they are killing are terrorists with no justification whatsoever. Most recently, a journalist, uh, Yasser Murtaja, that Israel killed two okay. uh, weeks ago while he was doing his job, they tried to come out and say that he was a Hamas operative out of nowhere, okay. even though that this journalist works with international organizations and, in fact, was given a grant by the U.S. government. Hawaida, thank you. And, and, and Boas, thank you. Just pause there. Um, I want to go to Ian, but first of all, I just want to play this clip from Riyad Mansour um, to the U.N. Security Council. Of course, he's the permanent Palestinian observer um, at the U.N. Uh, and then, Ian, I want to get your reaction to the wider implications of this off the bat. We will not leave a stone unturned. We have the right to demonstrate peacefully, to express our views, and the large crowd of this week in Gaza, larger than last week, is a demonstration that the Palestinian people, in a civilized, peaceful way, are expressing their opinion in the Gaza Strip, and they do not deserve to receive bullets for doing so. Ian, why now? Why is this happening now? And also, obviously, this is happening uh, uh, as Mike Pompeo visited the region. He spoke to the Israelis, but not the Palestinians. The Kushner peace plan seems to be on ice. Uh, we haven't really seen it. Um, why now? Well, I I'm glad you asked that. We need to look a bit at the background and mm. move away from these furious uh, exchanges. Agreed. Um, I, th I think what's happening in Gaza is a reflection of two related things. One is the broader sense that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is completely stuck. There have been no negotiations mm. since the spring of 2014 when John Kerry, who was Barack Obama's Secretary of State, basically gave up. There have been no negotiations whatsoever since then. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, and, and this is, this is an almost unprecedented uh, uh, period of, of, of impasse, of deadlock, and no realistic hope for any change in the future. Uh, within that situation, you have Gaza. The Gaza Strip, it's worth reminding people, is four miles wide and 20 miles long. Hawaii Araf has mm. reminded us that two million people live there. Indeed, most of them are the descendants rather than the original refugees of 1948. Gaza is in a terrible state. It is blockaded by Israel, by Egypt, and also by the Palestinian Authority, which rules in the name of the PLO from the West Bank town of Ramallah. So that's the big picture. The situation in Gaza is intolerable. Gaza has been ruled since 2007 by mm. Hamas, which, whose name in Arabic means the Islamic Resistance Movement. It believes in armed resistance to Israel. We do not know, but it is reasonable to assume, that most of the people in Gaza do not particularly support Hamas, which took over in a military coup against uh, the other Palestinian side, against uh, Fatah. The people who are taking part in these demonstrations, many of them want simply to draw attention to the fact 
that they are suffering and there is no hope for an end to it. Hamas is a political movement with an agenda of its own and it clearly wants to ride on that wave of popular uh, uh, anger and discontent and is doing what it's doing. Some of what the Israelis say Hamas is doing is almost certainly true. But not all the people in Gaza, not all those two million people support the Islamic resistance movement. It is a reminder that 70 years since the creation of the State of Israel and what the Palestinians mm. called their Nakba, their catastrophe in May 1948, the consequences of that are still with us and the, the prospects for peace have never ever been so bad. Okay, we only have a, a couple of minutes left, but uh, I'm going to give you 30 seconds each, guys. Uh, Boaz, um, w is there a way forward or are we going to continue to see the war of words like we've seen on this program and, of course, the exchange of uh, bullet fire uh, we've seen on the ground? First of all, I wish, I mean, we all wish for peace, you know, in, in the Jews, we Jews, we pray three times a day, we pray for peace. 1993, the Oslo Agreement, unfortunately today we're being teached in archaeological school and not political science school, uh, I was for them and I do believe that a finger of a kid, any kid, it can be a mm. Chinese, Palestinian, French, a Jewish kid, doesn't work for square meter. So you see what I'm talking about. Yet at the same time, as Mr. Black just now said, I mean, look who's ruling right now in Gaza Strip. It's Hamas. What do Hamas think about me as a country? They don't believe in my past. How can they believe in my future? And by the way, look, we're having a discussion now about the Palestinians, human rights, crime. I mean, should I remind you, the moderate Palestinian, Mr. Abu Mazen, what he said yesterday about the Holocaust? So please, I mean, okay. please, that is again the reason why I'm smiling. Thank you, Boas. Uh, last word, Huweda. Obviously, we're seeing the Thank demonstrations, uh, more uh, 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 violence. Is there any prospect for any, any talks whatsoever? And where do the Palestinians go from here? Well, you know what, there's a problem of Israel consistently violating the agreements that were agreed upon in 1993. We're 25 years out from the Oslo peace process and things are as bad as they've ever been. Uh, just, you know, uh, Boaz speaks of Hamas, but just a couple of weeks ago, Hamas spokesperson spoke to an Israeli journalist and said that he envisions two people living together in one land. But this is consistently rejected. What we need is not a return to a failed peace process where the U.S. has consistently been on the side of Israel in violation of international law. What we need is an international effort holding Israel accountable, putting international human rights at the center of any kind of negotiations. And then when there are violations, as there inevitably will be, like over the last 25 years, mm -hmm. Israel tripling the number of okay. settlements on, on colonized land, that Israel is held to count. And I, I support and call for what Amnesty International has called okay. for, which is an arms embargo on Israel now. Hueda, thank you so much. Thanks to all of you for joining us. It's a difficult discussion and the way forward, unfortunately. Thank you. Looks bleak. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Nathan King in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.